Back to Hannity after months of threatening legal action against the Obama administration, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, along with Freedom Works, has filed a class action lawsuit over the National Security Agency's domestic spying program. Now, the suit named President Obama, Director of National Intelligence James Clapper, NSA Director Keith Alexander, and FBI Director James Comey. Now, calling it one of the largest class action lawsuits in history, the senator alleges that the NSA surveillance program violates the Fourth Amendment, which prohibits unreasonable search and seizure. Here to explain, the man himself, Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. Uh, Senator, welcome back. Good to see you. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me. The legal action is in officially entitled Rand Paul versus Barack Obama. And from what I read, you're kind of hitting the ground running. You got over 350,000 plaintiffs. You expect millions of Americans are going to be joining this? Well, the interesting thing about it is, is that the class could include anybody who has a cell phone or anybody who has a landline. So it's really virtually everyone in the United States. And I think that illustrates the problem, is that a single warrant shouldn't apply to so many people. The Fourth Amendment said that, that if you want a warrant to look at someone's records to invade their privacy, you have to name the person, the place, and the items. You can't just say, okay, we're going to search everybody's home in Washington, D.C. or Bowling Green, Kentucky. You have to name the person, and that was to protect our privacy. And so we really think that the NSA program has gone way overboard, and we want a decision in an open court, in the Supreme Court, where there's open debate. We think that's the only thing consistent with a constitutional republic. Well, I, listen, I, I would support data mining, and I have supported data mining, of terrorists, of suspects. Um, the law specifically prohibits the spying against Americans. I've talked to the author of, of the bill. Um, Jim Sensenbrenner, numerous times, this is not the, what it was designed for, intended for, explicitly says you cannot do, doesn't it? Well, and see, the president, when he talked about privacy recently, said, oh, this is, you know, like Paul Revere, you know, in the history of Paul Revere warning us. But if Paul Revere wasn't saying, you know, the Americans are coming. He was saying the British were coming. I, you know, it was about a foreign invasion. So really, I think he's got it wrong. And the fact that he thinks that he can look at all of our records without a cause, without probable cause or suspicion. See, that's what warrants are based on. You go to a judge and the police say to the judge, we think this person robbed the store. We think this person's a murderer or we think this person's a terrorist. They present evidence because this protects us from them going into everyone's home or invading everyone's papers. This is a big and very important and to me a momentous constitutional issue and so far it's only been decided in secret. We have these courts called FISA courts which are national security courts but this is a question of the Constitution and it needs to lift the veil of secrecy and needs to be debated in public. Uh, the, the one thing that we share a concern on here is that they are literally data mining. I mean, every American that has a phone potentially has been tapped by the government. And there, it seems, first of all, it doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. It's sort of like you're not going to look at the Yemeni exchange student and, and give added uh, scrutiny to that student. But you're going you're gonna to search grandma and, and you're going to wand her and you're going to waste a lot of time on a two-year-old baby. It seems like with the limited resources we have that it's better, more cost efficient to target the people that we're looking at. And, well, and think about right? it. Even with, this, even with this data mining that we're supposedly doing on every American, the Sonarev boys, the brothers who were the Boston bombers, one of them had a website where he talked about terrorist bombing, and he was also communicating with Muslim extremists, and the Russians had tipped us off, and yet we didn't have any idea he flew back to Chechnya, and we weren't checking up on him. I think sometimes because we've misdirected millions and billions of dollars of resources to looking at Americans instead of targeting our spying on, on potential terrorists. All right. I think you and Freedom Works and Ken Cuccinelli have a very strong case here. There's a lot of things happening, though, that I would uh, the term I would use is lawlessness. And now the president yesterday, once again, delayed implementation of the employer mandate. Last year, the president pushed it back for a year. Uh, the administration unilaterally waived work requ requirements for for welfare, for the welfare program. Uh, when the DREAM Act failed to pass Congress, the president unilaterally told federal agents to stop enforcing immigration law. And there were many other instances. Don't we have checks and balances, co-equal branches of government, separation of powers? Because that seems to be lawless to me, and he is usurping the power of the, of the um, congressional branch or Congress itself. What do you think? 
Yeah, and the Constitution set it up where legislation came from Congress, but now we have the president essentially doing legislation or amending legislation. So yes, I think it's illegal, unconstitutional, and in fact our founding fathers looked to Montesquieu, the philosopher on the separation of powers, and he wrote that if the executive becomes the legislative branch, that it'll be a form of tyranny. And so it is important that we stop him. So I'm suing over the NSA. I can't right. sue him over everything unconstitutional he's doing, but we I hope somebody that, else will. What, why isn't Congress holding him accountable? Terry Jeffries brings up that point in a, in a really good column on CNS News today. Why are the Republicans not checking in this uh, usurping of, of legislative power? Well, I think they try some in the House. The more disappointing and the more, I think, uh, pertinent question is why aren't the Democrats standing up for the Constitution? This shouldn't be a partisan issue. There should be Democrat heroes who will stand up in the Senate and say, I know he's a Democrat president, but I also know the reading of the Constitution doesn't allow him to amend or create legislation. And so, therefore, even though I support him, I will stand up because we need that. Otherwise, if the Democrats won't stand up, they just keep running roughshod over us. All right. Good to see you, Senator. Good job today. We're going to watch very Thanks, closely. Rand Paul versus Barack Obama making its way through the courts. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.